Savino, Jet Boss. I am a captain for United Airlines. I am medically grounded, so I'm no longer flying. And that kind of puts me in a unique position where I can, I don't know, armchair fly now. There's been a lot of stuff going on in the airline industry, a lot of stuff in the news, and a lot of stuff that has not made the news that's really gotten my attention and has, has me concerned. And I decided it's time I just started sharing some of my thoughts, the pilot's perspective on some of these things that are going on. Now, I've never done videos before. I'm not a YouTuber. I apologize in advance because this really isn't my thing, but I'm giving it a shot. So the first incident that's on my mind is um, Japan Air, JAL 585. They uh, just had an incident that was classified as a serious incident that for some reason didn't make the news at all, and it is a big deal. The uh, aircraft was a 767-300ER extended range. They landed with only 1,700 pounds of fuel in each tank. That's 3,400 pounds total fuel on this aircraft. That is not a lot of fuel. That is an aircraft that is just about to have two engines flame out. And they had 258 passengers on board, which I'm guessing were none the wiser to the situation that they were in. Now, in the US, we have FARs, we have a lot of rules, a lot of regulations, but above and beyond that, airlines, uh, US carriers have company policies that are even more conservative. In the US, you're not gonna have an airliner land an aircraft with less than a 767 with less than 7,300 pounds. That's minimum fuel, that's low. Now, this aircraft landed with 3,400 pounds. So let's discuss this. Let's figure out as much as I can, and this is just my opinion because I am not in those pilots' heads, but let's figure out what was going on here and how that came to be and hopefully if we bring some awareness to these incidents it will help prevent them from happening again in the future to other pilots uh, that find themselves in similar situations all right let's get started okay so what did happen japan air 585 is a regularly scheduled flight daylight hours it was a morning flight domestic uh, about an hour and 20 minute flight time very routine. They were flying from Tokyo Haneda up to um, Hakudate, and they arrived at their destination at 8.55 a.m. They shot the approach. At 9 a.m. they went missed approach due to low visibility and fog. No surprise there. That was in the forecast. They circled back around and they tried again. Totally cool. Totally routine. Uh, they went missed approach at 9.19, so that was about 20 minutes um, after they had gone missed approach the first time. I'm not sure why it took them 20 minutes to um, circle around and come back in, but, but that's what it took. In any case, their clock was ticking down there. Second uh, attempt, the visibility was still bad. No surprise. The fog was still there. No surprise. So they went to their scheduled alternate. Their scheduled art alternate was a uh, new Chitose, which they made it to, barely. Now, the interesting thing was they went missed approach at 919 and they declared a fuel emergency en route to new Chitose um, only 16 minutes later at 935. So they shot that second approach, that second attempt up at, um, Hakudate with very, very little fuel. They chose to gamble and try again rather than go to their alternate now. Okay, all right, that didn't exactly work out for them. All right, so let's talk a little bit about fuel, fuel load. So probably the biggest decision that a pilot makes every single leg is how much fuel am I gonna put on this aircraft? There's a lot of thought that goes into that. It's not like a car where you just say, you know, fill her up 
and, uh, and, and you're on your merry way. There's a lot to think about. And that decision is, is a joint decision. The captain will discuss it with the other pilots after considering weather, ATC delays, all sorts of factors go into the decision as to how much fuel we want to carry. And we also make that decision jointly with our dispatcher. Our dispatcher is our licensed professional whose job it is to build a flight plan, to keep us safe, and to um, calculate all these things out really for us. And we very much appreciate their work. Um, and then of course there's the FARs, which have regulations and restrictions and limits. And then we have company policy, which generally is a lot more restrictive than the FARs. Uh, the airlines do not want their airplanes running out of fuel. And so we have very conservative work rules that we follow when it comes to deciding a fuel load. All right, so why would we want to keep the fuel low as in only put on as much as we need? Well, there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, one is simply capacity. Uh, there's just so much room, so much weight that you have on an aircraft. And oftentimes on long flights, if you put on fuel, you are lowering the payload. So what is the payload? The payload is anything we get paid for. Um, passengers, their luggage, freight, that's the payload. And there are times on long flights where, and I can attest that I've been a part of this more times than I can count, where we have a long international crossing to do and we want to put more fuel on than we really have the room to do. So what do you do? Do you put less fuel on and settle for that? Or do you somehow lower the payload? I hate to admit it, but sometimes passengers are bumped because we need that weight for the fuel. Sometimes passengers aren't bumped, but their bags don't make it. Well, maybe those bags misconnected or maybe those bags were pulled back at the you know, departure point because they needed that weight to add fuel. That does happen. And it's unfortunate, it's inconvenient, but it keeps everybody safe. And that's just the reality of uh, you know, long international flights. So another reason is fuel is heavy. It takes fuel to carry fuel. A heavier aircraft burns more fuel. And a heavier aircraft also can't climb to its most economical altitude. More than likely, if you put a lot of fuel on, you're gonna to have to step climb up to that altitude, which means you're gonna be stuck at a lower altitudes for longer periods of time, which means you're gonna be burning more fuel. So there's a lot that goes into this decision and it's important. But the question is, the question on my mind is, why did these pilots on this JAL flight who are flying a short domestic hop on a wide body ER aircraft, clearly they had room for more fuel. I'm assuming that, but I can't imagine how they didn't have room for more fuel. Why did they not put more fuel on the aircraft? Okay, this kind of gets into the pilot's head. And again, I can only talk from my personal experiences, um, but this is what I'm thinking about. This is where my thought process is, is why were these pilots limiting themselves when they didn't need to. Why was there so little fuel on this aircraft? Well, now that I've asked the question, I don't actually have the answer. I, I wish I knew. That, that is what keeps running around in my mind is, why didn't they put more fuel on? And why did they shoot a second approach rather than go to their alternate when clearly they could see at this point how low their fuel was? Why would they fly it to the point where they had to declare an emergency. What I can tell you a little bit is about what the pilots were going through at that point. First of all, they declared an emergency. Now that means they're in an emergency. It means the air traffic controllers will clear the air for them. They will clear the pavement for them. It means everybody gets out of their way because they need to land their aircraft now. Now, when you're an aircraft that's on the ground, say waiting for takeoff, and there's an aircraft that declared an emergency that's coming in, 
and you have to sit there for 15 minutes or maybe more and you're thinking you know i could have just departed and been out of everybody's way and it wouldn't have had been any problem at all but the truth is once they know that aircraft is coming in nobody moves everybody freezes and it really does make sense because say that aircraft got on the runway to depart and then say they i don't know say they blew a tire now suddenly you have a disabled aircraft on the runway now you've lost that runway so you can't take any risks when an aircraft has declared an emergency and everybody just has to sit back sit on their hands and wait and the truth is pilots might get a little frustrated but they get it and they're happy that they're not the emergency aircraft and honestly their heart is with those pilots because they know they're going through something that they themselves you know are glad that they're not in that position and they just wish the best for them and they will sit tight and they will wait until that aircraft is safely on the ground and that's just totally cool that's just you know that's just the way that it is um okay so what were the pilots going through that were in the air first of all on that aircraft they're going to be getting some warnings that are going to be pretty um pretty loud alerts letting them know they're about to run out of fuel so i'm sure they were stressing a little bit i'm sure they were well i'm assuming they were a little worried uh i believe that they probably were sweating this out could not have been a good feeling i know i've been on flights where i'm watching my fuel tick down and it's definitely going below the flight plan and the only thing on my mind is time and landing airport time and landing how much time do i have left where can i land how much time do i have left where can i land now and i can promise you i as soon as i can see on my synoptic page that my fuel is going to be below a certain number at my destination i don't continue on to that destination because i don't want to land with low fuel i land someplace and i have done this because of uh different mechanical reasons or unpredicted winds or different things have gone on where you had unexpected delays, unexpected occurrences, and you just have to put the airplane on the ground. Hey, let me tell you something. I remember back in 1990, Avianca, I think it was Avianca 52, was coming in to land at JFK at 707. They were coming in to land. I lived in New York at the time. They were coming in to land and they went missed approach and they flamed out all four engines and they crashed and they killed a whole lot of people. And on that flight, the captain had asked the first officer who was working the radios to declare an emergency. And the captain didn't speak English, so he was at the mercy of the first officer complying with what he asked him to do. The first officer lied to him and told the captain he had declared an emergency when he never had. The controllers had no idea this aircraft was that low on fuel, gave them a big wide vector to circle back around to come into land. And I think they even like cleared a TWA aircraft ahead of them because they didn't know. And they, they ended up losing all four engines and crashing. So declaring an emergency is absolutely critical when you reach a certain point. You cannot play it safe. Safe as in no one will know about this. I'll get away with it. You're not gonna get away with it. and as much as you might not like the attention that declaring an emergency might garner you at work, you might have to answer to it. Believe me, you're going to get a lot more attention if you, you know, kill a couple hundred people. So these pilots, I will say on the, the Japan air flight, they did do the right thing. They did declare an emergency ultimately, and they did get the airplane on the ground safely. I'm sure they were watching to keep their wings level and they were sure not to change their pitch or their bank too significantly because like a car, the fuel in your wings sloshes around. You wanna keep those fuel pumps covered or you could lose an engine even if you have enough fuel to keep that engine going. So I'm sure they tiptoed it in, got the airplane on the ground, they declared an emergency. It's a learning experience, uh, hopefully for all of us and these are the type of incidents that kind of get forgotten about or don't get any attention and they should because awareness of these kinds of mistakes 
can make a huge difference uh, for the next pilot and the next pilot, especially since we have so many young pilots coming up. They have to know that these things can happen and um, you know, we'll all, we'll all learn from it. All right, that's all I know so far about this incident. I found it really interesting, um, really alarming, and I'm gonna hang in there and see if any more information comes out about you know, how this came about, how it was so easy for them to get the slow on fuel. And the next incident that comes up, I don't know, maybe I'll do another video and talk about that one. All right, thank you everybody for hanging in with me. I really appreciate it and um, that's it. Everybody have a great day.